All right guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to my garage build series. Today I am gonna be doing the surface prep of my garage floor. Got a new concrete pour. It's been about a month since it's been poured. So I rented a tool from Home Depot and I am gonna grind it down. I've heard that grinding and of course surface prep in general are crucial to putting down a new floor. At first I was just gonna use an acid etching solution, but everybody warned me against it. So I'm gonna take their advice and do some grinding. So this is what I'm starting with, uh, just construction junk everywhere. So I'm gonna start out by sweeping that up, but this is the machine that I rented from Home Depot. It was about 170 bucks for both of these pieces for 24 hours with tax and everything. They gave me a really quick tutorial on how to use it. I've never used one, so this should be interesting. And on my way here, I picked up one of these. It uh, specifically says it's for grinding and sanding, so that's what I want. It was 30 bucks from Harbor Freight. And sometimes, apparently, Home Depot has a uh, attachment that goes around this that is a dust collection system, pretty much, to collect all of the dust that we're going to create. But they said that theirs just died and they threw it away. So I brought my shop vac which I've heard while doing some research from some local people that that is not going to work very well, but that's all we have, so I'm gonna give it a shot. The other option is you can do this thing wet. If you put water on the floor while you're grinding it, it will capture all of that dust and it will uh, not need to be vacuumed up, but it turns into a slurry and it can dry and that can cause other issues for you. So I was gonna do that and then use my pressure washer to pressure wash it all out. But uh, another local guy told me that that was not the best option because it would take a long time for that water to dry. And I'm gonna be applying something from Sherwin-Williams that needs to be completely dry and I have to do that tomorrow morning. So in lieu of that, can use a bucket and a mop, the old fashioned way to uh, damp mop it. So without getting it really wet, I'm gonna try to do that to get all the dust out. So you have a few different options of what you can do. Everybody says that something different is better. So I'm just gonna jump in and try this method. I'll show you how it works. All right, it took me 15 minutes to figure this out, but I believe these are the ones that are designed for the grinding. So I just had to put them on and twist them to snap them into place. Now for the fun with the grinder. So what the Home Depot people told me was that you can loosen this handle and you wanna drop it down to waist height. So once it's in a comfortable position, you lock it back down. And the way to turn it on is uh, there's a little safety button here. You have to press this button and then squeeze this at the same time. And they said there's one speed and it is go. And it's hard to control. So their advice, start in the middle of the floor, work a little area that is a little bit bigger than this, especially if you are actually stripping something off of the floor because you, uh, otherwise it will just kind of ride over it. Unless there's an edge that's already ground, so you can kind of move into that and it'll help uh, remove the stuff, I guess. But they said that the way you steer this is by uh, gently pushing up or down on this. They say like pushing uh, down will make it go to the right, up will make it go to the left, or vice versa. I don't know yet, we'll see when it happens. But they said to be very gentle because if you push down hard and you fight it, you will lose and it will fly to the left or the right. And if there's drywall over there, it'll smack into it. Luckily I have brick down here. So worst case for me, I'm gonna hit some brick, but uh, it's gonna be fun. So uh, essentially it is a balancing game. You wanna kind of balance it. So it is on the grinder instead of on the edge of the grinder because if it's on the edge, it will take off. So I'm gonna attach this thing here. They said attaching it is as easy as just lining it up and rotating it to lock it into place. Alright, so I guess that's locked. So I'm going to 
film the first time you see her, so you're either gonna laugh at me or learn something, or maybe both. We'll find out. I'm gonna put the mask on, set this up, and uh, let you see what happens. All right, that's kind of wild. Uh, yeah, it's not terrible, um, but uh, definitely takes a little bit to get used to. I believe down was right and up was left for the record. But I'm gonna do a little time lapse for you and try to start at the back corner, come through and knock all this out. All right, so before I go too far, I wanted to vacuum up some of this and see what was happening. And uh, first of all, the dust vac is uh, plenty strong enough to suck up this dust, for now at least. There is still a film that I will need to come back with the mop. But uh, let me zoom in so you can see this. You can see this whiter color part has been ground really well. It is uh, very porous to the touch and the darker part is still a little smoother so you can see that it hasn't really been ground down as much there so i think i'm going to go uh, back over this area and try to get it a little more uniformly white there i'm not going to go insane but i'll uh, get it a little bit more ground than this so this is a little before and after so yeah definitely going to make another pass and one thing that I learned is if you hold this like uh, not really tight but firmly up against your body it's a lot easier to control. You probably saw that I had it kind of at a 45 degree angle because for me it kind of uh, just felt more natural that way. And unless I was like kicking the cord out of the way or thinking about it, moving it far at one time without letting it just slowly do its own thing, uh, those are the only times I kind of started to lose control. But other than that, you kind of get in a groove. All right, just wanted to show you this was pass number one. This is pass number two. So much better. And it really shows you the reason you need to do this for anything to adhere because it's not gonna adhere to these smooth areas. The other thing I learned, hearing protection would have probably been a great idea. One more thing I don't wanna to forget to mention. This is 4,000 PSI concrete with the fiber reinforcement. So it is pretty hard. So if yours is not that strong, hopefully it won't be as difficult for you. So after a couple hours of balancing it, I realized it was not cutting in and it was going to take me forever. So right here is the technique that I started using. I am... Um, tilting it to the right so that the right edge of it is um, pressing more on the floor than the middle and you can see that it is kind of cutting in and then what I would do is I would um, push down on it so that the bottom edge would grip and it kind of spins it around in a circle like that but it actually grinds so much faster that way uh, because it would, I don't know, I would still be there today, I think, if I just did it the regular way. I read or heard somewhere 
that you weren't supposed to do this. Maybe it's bad for the blades or something, but yeah, I, uh, I had to do it. It would have taken forever. So I just wanted to show this kind of technique that I learned. And after it was in, then I kind of went back over it like this more slowly and normally and it kind of uh, got the rest of it. And if there was a, a really shiny area, I would do the same thing again. I would push down on the bottom of it, get it to swipe up, and you can see that it kind of gets rid of the shiny part and gets down to the uh, porous part that you want. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it took a toll on my body, though, that thing digging into my side for eight hours as I did this. So, yeah, you can see here the damage that it caused to my body personally but we got it done. Whew, oh my God, was that step one? Step one complete. I started this at 9 a.m. It is now, let me check, 7 p.m. on the dot. So with all of this sea of dust, there's no way my shot back is gonna be able to handle that. So I'm gonna just start out with a big broom. All right, next step, guys, I can't tell you how awesome my neighbors are. Oh, my, I haven't even moved into the neighborhood yet, and uh, my buddy across the street brought me a cold beer. I don't even know what this is. Wicked Weed Daylight. If you guys are looking for somebody to sponsor, help me DIY's garage. So delicious. And my other neighbor, Barry, let me borrow this thing. So for the next step, I'm gonna blow out what the shop vac did not get. Hopefully my neighbors will be on this channel one of these days, but uh, let's do this next step. Oh, I guess I should have used my mask for that. That's a lot of dust in there still. I guess I'm gonna let it settle and uh, do that one more time with my mask. All right, last step, good old fashioned mop and some water. I'm gonna uh, just use a little bit of water and mop up all the dust that is on the floor that I can get out. I'm gonna wring this out every, I don't know, 50 square feet. Wring it out. You can see it's picking up a lot of dust. All right, I'm damp mopping, I'm about Two thirds of the way done. This is not mopped. This is mopped and that's why I'm damp mopping because this has to be dry in the morning so I can put the coat on. And I've already changed the water three times. All right guys, I'm back for day two and this is what our floor looks like now. There's still a thin layer of dust after everything settled from yesterday. So I'm gonna take the shot back again with this attachment and uh, vacuum one more time before I put the ceiling down. Okay, this is our floor now. Nice and scuffed and mostly dust free. I feel like I could spend a whole nother day wet mopping and trying to get up all the dust, but at some point I just gotta paint. So thanks for watching my garage build progress, guys. Stay tuned for the next one where I'm going to do the sealer, which I'm going to do right now. But uh, watch out for the next video. Subscribe to the channel. Give this one a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. And I'll see you next week.